Hi, Ken here again. Um, in this video, let's go ahead and try to finish up the modeling of our bench seat here that we're modeling based on our reference picture up here. Um, since the last video, um, all I've done is I've added the, uh, the white stripes to the back here using the same method that we did uh, for the bottom of the seat. And I just um, added a, a place saver black material to our base here just so we can, uh, I don't know, I think it just makes it uh, easier sometimes to tell what you're modeling uh, if you add at least a place saver color. Um, we're going to go ahead and um, add some textures and color and whatnot to our model after we finish modeling, but I don't know, sometimes I think it just helps to have a little color while you're in the modeling process. Anyway, let's go back to our front orthographic view. And if you remember, this object here is our human reference object. This is about how big our character is going to be. Um, let me switch our pivot point back to individual origin. So our pivot point goes back up to the object that we're, we're looking at here. Now, we'll talk a little bit about anatomy when we get to the point when we're actually going to model our characters for this scene, but a few key points here might help us to proportion this, this object down here a little bit better than what it is. We probably, or I probably should have been paying a little bit more attention, because it looks like it's a little short. Um, but anyway, all right, here is our human reference model. Now over in our side panel here, there is a tab that says Grease Pencil. Now I have a, a bunch of tabs open here that you may not have uh, in your version of Blender, but you should have Grease Pencil. A lot of these other tabs are for um, different add-ons. Um, if you go to File, User Preferences, that will bring up your user preferences window here and under add-ons all these things like Topo Flow for instance um, all these things that are checked um, well some of them that were checked anyway will give uh, will open up an extra tab here on the side uh, for instance here is a uh, Topo Flow but we're not gonna go into uh, at all probably but at any rate, you should have this grease pencil panel here. What I'm going to do is um, we are going to uh, click Continuous Draw. And I'm just going to draw some key landmarks on our human reference object here. Now, directly in the middle, from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet, right in the middle uh, in a human character is going to be uh, where the crotch is. So we'll just put a little X there. Now this is, I'm just drawing with my mouse, so it's going to look a little sloppy. But the, that's where the crotch is. Uh, from the top of the head to the crotch, right directly in the middle, um, is about where the sternum is. So we'll draw that little symbol to indicate the, the sternum. The, the, that's, uh, you know, the rib cage is going to kind of kind of go like that. From the crotch to the bottom of the feet, directly in the middle, is going to be the bottom of the kneecap. So we'll draw the kneecap starting at the bottom there and kind of going up. So that is going to be about knee height. Uh, from the top of the head to the sternum, about in the middle, is going to be about where our chin is on our character. Okay, so those are just some landmarks um, on our character here that, that we can use to uh, proportion our object a little bit better here. Now in the, the grease pencil layer, the <laughs> our markings are behind the object, but that doesn't matter too much for what we're doing. So in the front view here, if this is going to be the knee of our character, it looks like we're a little bit low here on our object. So what I'm going to do, I don't want to grab uh, this whole thing and just scale it in the Z direction because I think that's gonna throw us that's gonna throw everything off just a little, like for instance I don't want this to be scaled in the Z direction too much so 
I'm just control hitting control Z to go back. What I think instead I'm going to do is we'll grab the cushions and our stripes and we're just going to move them up. Then I'm going to select my bottom object here. Um, Let's see, let's, let's clean this up a little bit, because you'll notice our bottom object, the origin, is up above the geometry. So let's change where our, our origin point is. Um, what I'm going to do is go into Edit Mode with this object selected, Control Tab, select Face Mode, grab the bottom face of our object, Shift S, do cursor to selected. That's going to put our 3D cursor right there on that bottom edge. Now, back in object mode, I can't remember what the shortcut is, but under object we can go origin to 3D cursor. And that's going to put the origin of that object right down at the bottom where we put the 3D cursor. So now if we scale in Z, the Z direction, that's S and then Z to constrain it to the Z axis, it's going to scale from that origin point and just go up. So we're not going to have to worry about it going through the floor and having to reposition it. Okay, so we've scaled that up a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and we'll go back in the wireframe mode. Hit B to box select all these objects. And we're going to put them back down on top of our base again something like that. Now, let's see, about knee height looks looks about right. Let's take... we'll just select... Uh, well... okay, let's go into edit mode. We're gonna select uh, our seat object here. Huh, okay, wait a second. <clears throat> well, let's see, how, how do we think that looks? Uh, I think that looks pretty good. Maybe this does need to scale up a little bit, though, so... Okay. Going to make sure that we get our stripes and everything selected. And let's scale that just a little bit in the Z direction. Just a little bit. About like that. And then we'll pull the whole thing up again so it sits back down there. Okay, let's see how badly we've affected our stripes here. Okay, let's see. We've got our seat selected. I think our, uh, oh, we gotta have to go back into material view. Okay, so the bottom cushion doesn't look too bad. We have some adjusting to do, but the top cushion is, is way off with the stripes. We need to adjust the stripes. No big deal. Okay. Let's look and see how our proportion is now. I think that looks a little bit better. If we take, uh, let's see, we select all of these objects here and slide them over. Let's see, I think since our character is six feet tall, that's a little tall, so it's okay to have his knee be a little bit above the seat here, I think. I think that looks okay. All right. Go back into material view. Now, I want to select my seat, and for some reason this is labeled upper stripe. I don't know, I must have done that when I was working on the stripes for the upper back, but we're going to rename that material seat. Okay, and we'll pick our uh, stripe here, and that is still labeled stripe. So now we have seat, seat base, and stripe for our three materials so far. All right. Let's select this stripe now, because it doesn't match our uh, the profile of our back now that we've scaled it. 
go into edit mode and let's see I want to pick or select this whole top here I'm going to hit uh, O to turn on proportional editing down here G to grab increase my area of influence and drag that up to about there I think is where we need to be let's see yeah that looks looks about right okay so let's see I can see that we need to come out a little bit here to grab this one G increase my area of influence and see if I can't get that whole thing to pull out okay Yeah, this will just take a little bit of adjusting, and there's a lot of uh, fiddling around with with your models that you'll you'll end up doing. The important thing is to not get stuck going down the rabbit hole, because <laughs> that can uh, that can absolutely happen. You can fiddle with something for hours and hours, and it turns out in the end that you may not even use it. So, if something is not exactly right, don't get overly concerned about it at least not in the early stages like this we're just kind of blocking everything in and um, trying to get everything about right just to see how it looks okay so I think I think we've got that stripe looking pretty good on that side so I'm going to uh, select this stripe hit X to delete it. Uh, that stripe right there, if I can get it. There we go. X to delete that. Now let's see, this stripe's got a little too much too much length going on down on the bottom here. So let's uh, let's see. We'll select these vertices here. X delete vertices. I think that's probably yeah, that's probably good right there. Okay. All right. Back in the solid view. Back into material view. So now in object mode. Let's go into this view. We'll select this stripe here. Shift D. Y to constrain it to the Y axis. Move it on down until it's about there. This stripe. Shift D. Y to constrain it to the Y axis. Move it on down until it's even with that one more or less. Uh, let's see, right, right about there, I guess. All right, so there. We've reproportioned our object um, to fit our, our reference just a little bit more, and uh, we've made some adjustments to make the stripes fit a little bit more. And I, th I think that's about the size that we want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, in my grease pencil, uh, panel over here. I'm going to go ahead and delete our grease pencil layer. I suppose we don't need it anymore. All right. So that looks. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe the seat is. Uh, this angle here is a little bit exaggerated, but that's kind of the look that I want to go for um, in this scene. Anyway, so I think that looks pretty good. All right it's way too short this way. We want this to be uh, at least wide enough for two people to fit comfortably. So let's uh, go into right 
orthographic mode by pressing 3 on the numpad. And um, sorry, I forgot about the uh, screencast keys down here. Um, I can go ahead and turn those on real quickly. Uh, this is something uh, that may be interesting about Blender that you that may come in handy. I'm going to turn this window temporarily into a uh, text editor and I'm going to open let's see uh, a folder that I named screencast with a uh, Python script in it. This is, uh, is a script that you can download if you just uh, do a Google search for screencast, you know, Blender screencast, and you should be able to find this pretty easily if you ever wanted to use it. Uh, but from the text editor, just hit run script. Now we'll switch back to our uh, properties. Whoops, wrong window. UV image editor. Um, we'll switch this window back to our properties window. And now down here we should have yeah screencast. So I'll hit start display, and there are screencast keys. will be running down here again. Okay. Good deal. So okay, now from our right orthographic view, I'm going to select all of these objects, not our lamp, um, and we're going to scale in the y direction. Uh, I don't know about that wide. Looks like we probably didn't move our stripes, but we can fix that. Okay, that looks that looks wide enough, I think. Uh, move our stripes back over. We learn as doing, as I always say. So this will be this is. Kind of a learning experience for me as well. Um, I did not uh, do this tutorial prior to trying to uh, to record it, so you're seeing all the little mistakes uh, that I'm making and what we can do to correct those. Hopefully, that'll have some value in itself. These are the things that you run into when you're when you're modeling. You'll, you'll find out that uh, uh, there's a lot of trial and error sometimes. Okay. It looks like uh, our stripes scaled in the y direction, so they're a little big now, but uh, big in the y direction. Here, let's see. Let's pick this one. We'll zoom into it a little bit. Yeah, see, they, uh, they scaled in the y direction. Um, and they're a little, let's see, yeah. A little off, so I don't know. I, I kind of like them a little wider, like that. Let's move them more in this way. I think. Grab Y, move it so it kind of lines up with that one. Let's see how we're doing. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any daylight between there now. Um. If I like it that far in. Here, I'll tell you what. Let's move these back out to the edge here. I think they look a little bit better. I'm going to take uh, this object, shift select this object. Uh, okay, and I'm going to join these two objects together. Hit object, transform origin to geometry. Okay, so now if we grab that you'll see that this is now one object here. So let's see. First of all I know I want to scale it in the y direction because I think it's too, a little too thick. So let's see how's that looking. I think that looks that looks a little bit better. Got a little daylight coming in there. Yep, we got a little daylight between our stripe and our seat here. So I'm going to 
G to grab Z. We're going to move it down. Okay, there we go. So we see it's starting to intersect. About like so. Okay, we're going to have to readjust a little bit here. Tab in edit mode. Um, let's see, first of all, this one is down too low, so we'll bring it up to about there. Grab this, make sure proportional editing is on. I'm going to hit G to grab and move that, move that in until right about there. Grab that one, move it, move it in just like so. Okay, this we can see needs to come up. All right. This needs to come up a little bit. There we go. Okay. All right. I think that looks pretty good. I didn't mean to spend all this time on these stripes, but uh, sometimes. Uh, Sometimes that's the way it works. Okay, that looks like it's positioned correctly, except for the top needs to come up just a little bit. So we'll select that, G, grab in the Z direction, just pull it up a little bit, just like so. Okay, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. All right, so, to avoid having to do that over on this side, I'm going to grab that stripe. Oops. I'm going to grab that stripe, shift, select that stripe, hit X to delete. Grab this stripe now that goes over the whole thing now. Shift D, and it's in transform mode automatically, so hit Y to constrain it to the Y axis and move it on down to the end there. Oop. That looks that looks about right. Okay, so grab that. Grab oops. Select our stripe, select the back or the seat, select that stripe. So we have all three of those objects selected. And we can see our character object behind there a little bit. So I'm going to hit grab Z and bring all these down just, just a hair. So they're more or less resting on, on the base. Okay. I think that, that looks pretty good for our bench there. Now, let's see. We are um, probably going to render this scene out in, in cycles, but let, let's, let's try something real quick. Let's go to our Blender render engine, and you can see immediately that something doesn't look right. Well, over here, um, if we select our seat object here, we go to our material over here and click this little uh, button here, use, uh, use shader nodes. That should... Uh, That should help us out there. Because, uh, when we created the material in cycles, it's a little bit different from the material that the Blender render engine uses. So we have to do a little bit of adjustment to go back and forth. Um, so let's uh, let's pick our red color again, about like so. All right. 
Now let's pick our stripe. We're going to hit our used nodes and we're going to pick our stripe material. And just make that pure white. And we're going to try to pick our other stripe over here. Okay, that is uh, that's using our stripe material. Okay, let's pick our base. And for seat base, uh, let's see. Okay, the two there means that it's um, sharing. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, I'm going to pick the seat. This two here means that the material is being shared between two objects. So I'm going to hit that. So the uh, seat base here is a uh, is not connected to any other object because I think somehow it got connected to our base here. So let's take our uh, seat base <laughs> and uh, we're gonna pick our seat base color here for the base it looks a little bit dark to me so I'm gonna raise it up just a little bit like so okay so we're gonna name that or leave that name to seat base this material we're going to rename seat and our stripe material is good. Okay, so we got uh, we have an extra material in there, but that's fine. That doesn't matter. Okay. The only reason I want to do this is because in the Blender with Blender Render selected, we can turn our shading to GLSL. Uh, I don't think it'll matter so much for right now, but we'll turn backface calling on. And now if we take our lamp that's in the scene, hit G to move it, you can see that it's lighting our object in real time in the viewport here. And that can, that can be helpful sometimes uh, when you're trying to model. Let's turn that lamp into, uh, let's see, try to sun. There's our sun lamp, uh, Hemi. Hemi lamp looks pretty good. We'll turn, uh, make it slightly yellow. Uh, turn the energy down just a little bit, like so. Okay. So there is our bench, uh, our booth seat modeled, and we have some temporary materials on it just so we can kind of get a feel for uh, what our final object is going to look like. Sorry that this video has been a little rambling and uh, we had to do a bunch of adjusting on the stripes here to get them to show up the way we wanted, but I wanted you to see that because uh, in modeling sometimes that happens. There's a lot of uh, a lot of adjusting and going back and forth and trying things and then readjusting and trying some new things before you get what you're looking for. So this is our bench right here. Looks like it's complete. Uh, in the next video, we'll do a little bit of cleanup on this object. We'll duplicate it, flip it around, stick it on the other side so it looks more or less like this, and then we'll start working on the table. All right, thanks very much for watching, and um, I'll see you in the next video.